Hello and welcome to The Only Way is Open Source. In this short video, I'll walk you through installing Debian 12 Bookworm. There's also a step-by-step -step user guide linked in the description to help you follow along. So without further ado, let's dive in. To begin with, in a web browser of your choice, navigate to the Debian website. The Debian homepage looks something like this. Simply press the download button in order to start the download for the Debian net install ISO file. This is a lightweight installer that downloads packages during setup. Next, prep your virtual machine for the Debian installation. Select new and name your virtual machine. Select a location for your virtual machine. Specify the ISO file that was previously downloaded. Check the skip unattended installation box, then press next. If possible, increase the base memory and processor allocation. On the next screen, set your hard disk space. And lastly, check the summary and if you are happy with it, select finish. To begin the installation, now you just need to run your virtual machine. When the virtual machine boots, here you can choose the option Graphical Install. Choose the language to be used for the installation process. Select your location. Pick a suitable key map to use. Enter a host name for your system. Choose to enter a domain name or simply leave it blank. Set a password for the root user, then enter it in again to verify. As part of the installation, you'll be prompted to create a regular non-administrative user account. At this stage, enter the name you'd like to use for your everyday login. This user won't have root privileges by default. Now set a password for this user. Next, the installer will guide you through the disk partitioning. In this example, we will use the guided use entire disk as this option tells the installer to automatically set up the necessary disk partitions now you'll choose the disk where Debian will be installed. You'll be asked to confirm the partitioning scheme. In this example, we'll go with the default, all files in one partition. Next, review the summary of changes. The installer will show you how it plans to divide the disk. Then you'll be asked to confirm by selecting Finish Partitioning and Write Changes to Disk. It will then check with you one last time if you do want to write the changes to disk. Select yes, then continue. Debian will begin formatting the disk and installing the base system. Once it's finished, you will then be asked if you want to scan extra installation media. In this example, we do not. Next, choose a country for your network mirror. This is where Debian will download packages from during installation and updates. Select the country closest to you for faster and more reliable downloads. You will now see a list of Debian archive mirrors. These are official servers that host all the Debian packages. Pick the default one at the top. A proxy can be set here. In this example, we shall leave it as blank. The installer then configures app Debian's package manager which handles the installation, updating and removing of software. When asked if you want to participate in the package usage survey, select no. So far, only the core of the system has been installed. Here we can select one of the following predefined collections of software for installation. At this stage, I suggest removing the GNOME desktop environment and adding the Cinnamon desktop. The Debian installer will then proceed to install all the additional and necessary packages.
you'll be asked whether to install the Grub bootloader to the primary drive. Choose Yes. Then select the device that you want the bootloader to be installed onto. In this case, we want our virtual hard drive selected. The installation is now complete. You'll see a prompt to remove any installation media you may have. Click Continue. Once you do, the system will reboot into your new Debian installation, presenting you with a logon screen. To log in, use the username and password you set up earlier. Once you're logged in, make sure everything works. Your desktop loads, input devices respond, and the system feels stable. To make further tweaks and get the most out of your system, be sure to check the user guide linked in the description below.